So we were just asking how precise can a line search be? How much can I narrow down the x value? Um, for that we have to talk about how much round off goes on in computers. Um, and here's what typically happens. We'd say not, not what's the smallest non-zero value you can compute. Uh, that's about 10 to the negative 308th. Uh, so 0 0.000308 times. Um, but then if you added that to one, a computer's not going to store all 308 uh, zeros in between the one and the one. Um, so what really matters more here is how different two numbers can be when they have a non-zero size. So there's this concept called machine epsilon, epsilon being a, a Greek letter that we often use for very, very small things. And it's basically the smallest number you can add to one and get something that's not one anymore. So if I tried adding 10 to the minus 13th to one, you can see there's a one right here. So I got something that's different than one. Uh, 10 to the minus 14th, I get a one over here, which is different than one. What if I add 10 to the minus 15th? You would expect to see a one here, but we're not seeing it. So I would say uh, for Excel here, 10 to the minus 15th is just below machine epsilon. Uh, 10 to the minus 14th might be a safer thing to think of. Um, the way a lot of software like Python and MATLAB computes things, machine epsilon is basically 10 to the minus 15, 10 to the minus 16. Um, so that's how different two objective function values can be. But what does that tell us about the x values that we're using to optimize? Let's consider a function um, like 1 plus x squared uh, near x equals 0. The most different the y values can be is machine epsilon. And so what x value corresponds to getting a y value that's just a hair above machine epsilon, uh, just a hair above 1 here? You'd say, well, 1 plus x squared equals 1 plus machine epsilon. So here we'd have to say um, square root um, of machine epsilon, which, and let's just call that 1e e minus 15. So about 10 to the negative eighth is the best x precision we can expect when we're running optimization. Um, and then if we were doing a more than one dimensional problem, the same thing applies. Uh, we already talked about what's the best delta x to use when we're trying to compute derivatives by finite differences. And it was also about 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8 for pretty much the same reasons. Um, this is for x values that are near 0 or 1. If our optimum x value was at like a billion, which is nine zeros, then we would kind of multiply this by a billion to get the reasonable uh, precision out of that range. Um, then um, that's what, uh, so that's if your x values are large. Um, not all machine computations give you machine epsilon in terms of precision. Differential equation solvers uh, might only give you three digits of precision, and so you would treat that as machine epsilon and take square root of that, and that would be roughly how accurate your x values would be. Um, this is all in theory, which is great. It's fun to think about theory. Uh, and the absolute limits of human knowledge. Um, but a lot of the time our objective function is like, well, here's what I think the prices will be six months from now. And so I don't really need a fully precise mathematical answer to my objective function, to, to my optimization, because there's really like plus or minus 30% error in all the coefficients anyway. So it's good to think about theoretical conditions and issues. It's also good to think about what, what's going on in practice. So that's how precise we can expect our x values to be. One more issue to close out the module. Um, so we talked about second derivative. We've we didn't talk about these. Um, they're not all that interesting. You can go look them up if you're, in, uh, if you're really curious. Uh, we talked about these. Um, this one was three-point parabolic. Uh, we talked about Brent's method. Backtracking is even simpler than most of these. We just kind of guess a large value, and if that's big enough, keep decreasing it until it's thing until the objective function starts going up again. That's fairly common in uh, machine learning these days. We talked about learning rate in our other module. It is, in some cases, possible to do exact line search. If your function is a nice, simple uh, algebraic expression, you can plug in um, 
uh, your search direction and your current position, leave alpha as a variable, get a new expression, and then minimize that expression by taking the derivative, setting the derivative equal to zero, and solving for alpha. Um, so there's very few times you can do that. Um, or uh, on our homework, I say just graph that function and spot its minimum, and we'll say that's exact to three decimal places or something, and that's all we need for the homework. All right, so have fun with the homework.